a lot of times people are looking for these low hanging fruit types of opportunities. And I know you've spoken about it on various platforms, but there seems to be a fleeting uh, consistency and success when you're just chasing the hacks, the quick wins. Do you think there's something wrong with that? Or should we be focusing on something completely different to lower risk and be more successful? I believe there's been a proliferation of uh, information marketers who have uh, probably done a disservice to aspiring entrepreneurs and, and, and ones that are in business, but mostly aspiring ones, by convincing them that a tactic, whether it's you know, great funnel or uh, uh, a, a great way to get views or likes or whatever you are is going to really produce a sustainable, ever growing, compounding and very, very uh, Im impressive business that will last a lifetime. I think that most people don't realize it, but they are being taught short term promotional techniques. And the problem is that a promotional technique, if you are lucky enough to be one of the early adopters, will affirmatively give you a short-term advantage. But the people selling those techniques aren't trying to sell just you or I. They want to sell a million of you and I, so when everybody has it, it's no longer an advantage. It just becomes a standard operating procedure. Just It's an entry fee. So it, I think it's really a tragedy because I believe I was raised and what I stand for and what most of the last 40 years of my body of work and my efforts and my career have been focused on is helping real business owners create sustainable and ever multiplying business growth based on wonderful strategy, wonderful business models, wonderful distribution channels, wonderful preemptive positioning and advantage, wonderful strategic alliances, wonderful, wonderful networks of endorsers and recommended provider status and and referral networks, and also figuring how they could utilize their resources to far greater advantage. And, and I think that if people realize that to have a really enduring, sustaining business, not, not, not a promotion, requires a much longer term understanding. It's almost like golf. And I'm not a golfer, but there's Three parts: short, mid, long game. I don't think most of the of the information marketers are teaching entrepreneurs how to play the mid, or definitely not the long game. And the short term, there's all these factors you have no control over if you just if you just operate a tactical driven and uh, let's call it lowest common denominator fad type business. You you're you're at the you're, it's a precarious position. It's a slippery slope. You're at the the vagaries of of anything of of competition of of uh, the the algorithm of of popularity. I mean, and there's so many factors you don't have control of. I like to figure out what I can control, not what I can't. And I also don't like promotional based businesses that are short lived. I like businesses that just get more and more. Um, successful and given the book, it, it makes a point about the value of the business and are worth a heck of a lot more whatever you don't want it anymore, whether you want to retire, whether you want to move up the food chain, whether you know you uh, you're tired of that industry, whatever it is. And most of these uh, promotional lifestyle short term, you know short game type businesses have no asset value, no equity whatsoever. I find that very interesting because I noticed uh, if I work with an organization, say in the seven figures, like in the early millions of dollars, you start seeing how having these foundational principles and a lot of the things which are about building wealth really start taking off because there's an existing ecosystem, an existing flow of value of, or, or of money that's coming in. So when you have the foundations put in place, you can see radical quick enhancements on the progress of the business, but it almost seems like you need to reach a certain point of income before you have to go into doing the things like, all right, let's build some strategies, let's make sure we have priorities, or am I getting this wrong? Because you know, when you work with six-figure businesses, it seems like we need to break through through promotionals and hacks, and I don't know what you've witnessed. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and I have to be very candid with you, that's no longer the primary market I serve. So I, I default, I gravitate, I prefer uh, low eight, nine, 
uh, even 10-figure businesses that have systems, process, infrastructure, and are uh, have a lot of moving parts I can impact. But I would say that it, there's this interesting um, integration of income, out, outcome, and input, output. And I think that if you don't set up the business to be enduring and sustaining, it can't be. And no matter where you are, I mean, there are people that start a business and it becomes, you know, epic. It becomes uh, a gargantuan. There are people that start a business and it, it doesn't even make it uh, through the first year. Now, at, that's going to tie into what we'll talk about. But I think it has to do with what you're trying to create from the beginning. And, and I think that there is a there is a tragedy because a lot of the promotional stuff out there that encourages people to create these promotional based uh, entities would convince them that making money is the key denominator of a sustaining business. And if the business can't grow by it, well, the value it creates, the organization that it fosters, the, you know, the the evolution it may it, it parallels to the demands, needs, interests, uh, you know, of, of of markets and the ever changing wars. It can't be enduring, and you're going to have. That's why people go from today. I'm uh, I'm selling, uh, you know, what one business opportunity. Tomorrow I'm selling forex. The next day I'm selling, you know, whatever the market wants because I don't have any endurability. This is burnt out because I wasn't really. In a business, I was just a promoter trying to make, you know, short game money. Hmm. You deliberately use the word wealth, you know, building business wealth, not revenue, not profit, but really wealth. And I would love for you to expand on like, what is the different mindset you have and why is it so better to go and pursue wealth as opposed to just profit? Well, and it's, it's close to home. I have uh, personally had an impact on tens of thousands of businesses, uh, many hundreds of A-class experts around the world. And I, uh, I, the, the press estimates, and I'm saying this not to be arrogant, it's clinical and it's going to be self, you know, self-critical. Uh, the press claims I've created at least 50 billion, billion, not, not million dollars worth of profit increases, not, not revenue, just, just profit increases. And I've been very handsomely paid. I've gotten paid millions of dollars from sometimes from one client but I never took equity and I've had many clients that I've helped not only earn a lot of money, but when they sold the business, they had enormous paydays, many, 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 many times more than they ever were able to earn in their best years in the businesses I helped them grow. The difference between income and asset value, wealth is a, a function of two things. If you're making income, and the income is is heavily taxable, unless you use that income to acquire assets that will appreciate and create more passive income, then all you have is the income you, you generate from the business. If there's nobody who would buy that business or no one who would buy it for more than a very modest premium above what you make from it in a year, then it's not really wealth creation asset. It's just an income generating source and when you're done with your career with that that cycle of popularity you've got nothing to show for it if instead you're building a business that ultimately will be worth 10 15 20 times whatever the best year it pays you when you're ready to sell it now you've got an asset that can create great wealth you talked about the the book we created if i can talk about it a minute I will integrate it through the needle of our discussion. It, may I do that? Absolutely. So the title of the book is Business Wealth Without Risk. But what's more probably compelling and telling is the subtitle, How to Create the Income and Wealth of a Lifetime Every Three to Five Years. And it's a very distinctively different, a very different slant on what a business purpose and capability is to generate for someone the level of prosperity and security they really want, but most of the time cannot possibly achieve with the strategy or the tactical approach they are following. 
And it's all about creating assets that have such enormous, not just value, but desirability and creating this, it's using uh, arbitrage, getting control of something that's worth X and through very, very little or low risk elements and very little or zero out of pocket investment, creating an enormously increased value that creates a multiple. Multiple is the amount above and beyond, depending on the industry, what it makes in profit or what it generates in revenue, that it is worth. And knowing it becomes so desirable that many, many, many people or companies will stand in line to buy it from you whenever you want to sell it. Now, that's totally different than most uh, business owners that have something no one will buy, or if they want to buy it, they either will pay very little more than a year, and most of them won't even pay up front. You got to wait and hope and pray that they don't run into the ground because you got to take terms. So this book is the total opposite. It's it it starts with the premise of why start a business. It's got two parallel universes, and and both are rather interesting. The first is why start a business from scratch when it's got a one in 20 and a one in 21st year, a one in 10 five year success rate. So it's got a 5% first year success probability, a 10% five year. Now you may be the exception, maybe the aberration, but those are the numbers. When in fact you can find hundreds of thousands or millions, depending on how expansive you know your target area is of businesses that have already been validated for the five years that are underperforming, that you can get control of through, well, my, my uh, colleague, Roland Frazier, who's a collaborator on the book, has 200 different mechanisms, methods, ways to acquire a business using so little out of pocket that it's almost negligible. And only a few of them are getting the owner to carry a note. There's all kinds of ways to get other people very much motivated to buy it for you. And if they buy it for you, you have such a low uh, investment that the yield you get out of it just by increasing earnings is returns that so dwarf what you can get in the stock market in Bitcoin in in uh, investment real estate. But that's only stage one. Then you use uh, you what you get control of it. I have ninety seven different categories, not not just ways or techniques. Categories. Some of them are like they're 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 huge bushels that have sometimes twenty five different the different optional techniques you can use to blow up profit, EBITDA. So you acquire it. It's been validated, but it's underperforming. You don't put much or any of your own money out. You then use my mechanisms to multiply the profitability by orders of magnitude. Really, you can get it five, 10 times in a short period for no investment or risk. I repeat, no investment or risk other than shifting how you do what you do, where you do it. And now you do what's called an epic exit, which is how you sell it for a huge, huge multiple over what you paid for it. And then you rinse and repeat. So that's approach one. Approach two, which is the one that I particularly love, is if you own a business that is reasonably successful or at least viable, you can grow it through great marketing. You can grow it through great advertising. You can grow it through having a good sales force. You can grow it through really qualitative word of mouth. And there's nothing wrong with that linear type of a strategy. And and sometimes that linear can be exploded with better marketing, better, better things. But if you add acquisition to it and you look at acquiring competitive businesses that you can integrate that in the economies of scale, you can turn a marginal business you acquire into a huge moneymaker by absorbing most of the, the resources, the overhead and the and the staff, because you've already got that. You can eliminate a lot of duplicate functions. You could acquire product services that people buy before, during, after what they buy from you and multiply the the revenue you get and the corresponding profit from that same uh, buyer that you have the sunk cost investment in acquiring. You can buy companies, product services that compete with you so you compete against yourself. Why would you do that? Well, if you have prospects that don't buy from you, but they're going to buy from somebody else in the category or an alternative form, like if you were selling, for example, 
a, uh, a weight loss supplement, you could be competing against yourself with other supplements because most people take supplement for a while and they start stop and take another one because they really aren't going to do what it takes, which is change their eating exercise. Or <laughs> if they don't take a supplement when they're done with you, if they don't lose weight, which most don't, they're going to buy portion control food like Weight Watchers or uh, something like that. Or they're going to join a gym or they're going to get an online or personal trainer or they're going to buy a piece of equipment. So there's all kinds of things. And the next level of this, which is mind-blowingly exciting, you can acquire access vehicles. What's an access vehicle? You can acquire podcasts. I could buy your podcast. Not that you'd sell it, but if I wanted your audience, I could buy it. And it, you wouldn't have, it wouldn't be as valuable to you as to me if I wanted your audience because it would feed my products or my service or my repeat products or service. I can buy discussion groups. I can buy blogs. I can buy URLs. I can buy phone numbers. I can buy sales forces. It's a really exciting concept. And so if you own a business, you can, you can so monumentally multiply what can produce, deliver, and create for you, not just in income, but in wealth in a very short order. And you can't do that just running the business, particularly if you don't have a way to grow it dramatically and growing the top line isn't the real key. You can multiply the bottom line so much faster, so much uh, more safely, so much more predictably than top line, but the top line will grow too. So the book is about, first of all, uh, the most ingenious proven ways to find the businesses and acquire them without really utilizing much or any of your own capital or risk. The second part of the book is how to take that business because if you buy it, 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 you can't just sell it. I, I, I laugh about something. I love South Park. I don't know if you like South Park, but <laughs> comedy shows. So one of my favorite episodes is called The Underpants Gnomes. Did you happen to ever see that? I don't think so. It's it's very appropriate to the point I'm making. So this, I don't know the, the, the South Park kid's name, but he, his dad owns a Starbucks-like coffee shop. And the kid's drinking double espressos all day long and his eyes are popping out. And he can't, you know, he's just, he's a neurotic, uh, jittery bug guy who has trouble sleeping. And he tells all the South Park kids, every night, all these gnomes shuffle into my room and they steal my underpants. And the, the South Park kids think this kid is just like, he's, he's tripping out because he's drinking so much caffeine. They say, we're going to prove you wrong. So they hide in the closet and it's two o'clock in the morning, the kid's sleeping. And sure as, as you know what, this whole army of little gnomes come shoveling into the room. They get on each other's shoulders to the top uh, drawer in, in his bedroom and they pull out and start throwing all the underwear out. The South Park kids jump out, scare the gnomes, say, what in the world are you doing? The head gnome goes, this is part of our big business plan. And they go, what's the plan? He goes, step one, steal underpants. Step three, profit. There was no step two. And I made that point because if you just get control of a business and you have no step two, how to blow up its profit potential, then the step three of selling it, you can't sell it for a lot more. But if you get control for almost nothing, so you don't have a lot of risk, you make this asset not only easily able to pay its own debt service, but make so much more above and beyond that. But at the same time, you make it so much more profitable that it gets into a level above it's a little bit complicated, but at a certain level of revenue and profit, it's worth X amount of multiple if anybody even wants to buy it. You double, redouble, redouble that. It's not just the same X. It's asymmetric. It can be 5X, 6X, more X. It could be up to 20X as opposed to 1 or 2X. So it's a very sophisticated concept that has been brought down to accessibility to Anybody, you, somebody who wants to start a business, don't do it. Acquire one that's underperforming. You're somebody that has a business and you got pretty good marketing and advertising. Keep it up, but don't just limit that. Acquire, you know, 
five businesses that compete against you. Acquire all kinds of products people buy before, during, after. Acquire competitive businesses. Acquire every podcast you can. Acquire every discussion group. Acquire everybody else's sales force. You can buy a sales force in a lot of businesses, and that's more valuable than buying the business. Why? Because when an owner starts a business, he or she is usually the person that sells. Then they become the manager. Then if it if it does reasonably well, they sit around and they don't even get deeply involved. They don't even have usually a direct relationship with the buyers, with the clients, and the salespeople do, or the customer service do, or the technical support do. If you buy them for almost nothing, you give them a multiple over their salary, and it's a fraction of what you'd have to pay to buy the business. I can go on and on and on, but it's just so much cooler. I I was attracted to want to do this because I met Roland Frazier, my co-author. He is brilliant at buying businesses using inventive strategies. He is brilliant at selling businesses for maximum value. He's very good, but I'm actually even better at knowing how to multiply and blow up the profit uh, potential and have it just basically mint money as long as as uh, the owners will execute. The combination of us is like a peanut butter cup, you know, chocolate and peanut butter together. He's got He's got the acquisition part, the financing part, the we call it an epic exit for a mammoth payday. I have the key that is how do you make that business produce so much more profit that it elevates not just its income, but its value. And then you rinse and repeat. It can mean you sell the business and you go to the next level. You do it again and again. It means you rinse and repeat. You buy more businesses that you bring together and then you create this invaluably multiplied asset. Asset is the key. Net worth is the key. Wealth creation, the key. Totally different than just making income this week or this month or this year and having to figure out how you're going to do it next year and what you're going to do when you retire. It's a whole different game. And anybody, anybody, Jason, can play it starting today. And the book is 447 pages. It's not uh, a modest book. It's really deep. It's got charts. It's got examples. It's written so that anybody can understand it. To give you an indication of how impressive the book turned out, not how great we are, but how impressive the message in the book, the way we explain it, the simplification and the actionability that it provides through all the examples, the case studies and the illustrations and the easy form of shifting people's mindset. Tony Robbins wrote a five-page forward, a five-page forward, not a five-paragraph forward. Damon John from Shark Tank wrote a three-page introduction. Gio Wickman, who if you don't know him, he's very popular. Know. He wrote, you know, he started EOS, Entrepreneur Operating System, his many books, but his popular one is Traction, wrote the the preface. Barbara Cochran from Shark Tank is one of many endorsers. It is a very, very amazing book. And it's not light and teaser. It's not some book that you read it and you go, well, now I'm going to have to retain them. And by the way, Roland and I wrote the book because we know the vast majority aren't going to be what we want. We want deal flow. We want businesses we can get involved in that are already poised that if we get involved, we can create tens or hundreds of millions of dollars more wealth through and for them where we get to share in that. But that's only a fraction. We know that we're going to help so many more people shift forever their, their economic future, their levels of prosperity and the game that they play because this is so much safer, so much more lucrative, so much more result certain, so much more high yielding now and even multiple times more in the future. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. Nice. What I feel from what you just shared right now is the level of game that's being played at the top percent of people that are doing venture capital, angel investing. And from what I understand is today more than ever, the sophisticated methods of building wealth are becoming more accessible to the masses. And what you've put together is the blueprint for anybody who is looking to change their financial situation can actually go and apply these principles that have been operating and successful for only the top 1%. You're sharing those ways and realize that it can be done at all the levels of wealth to get us to the next level. Is that how I understand it? You did a great job. I'm going to take you on the road with my interviews, and I'm and they'll say, "Well, can you tell me?" <laughs> I'm going to say no, but Jason can. 
Uh, thank you. Yeah, if you think about it, not that anybody wants to go there if they're not familiar or comfortable, but the private equity firms are creating the most wealth. They buy something either that is underperforming, they blow up the profit, and then they sell it for a lot, or they do a roll-up. They'll buy 10 of the same thing and make that asset worth a lot more because it's more desirable, and they can then they also, at the same time, concurrently multiply profit. This is intellectually, this is strategically, this is, uh, I mean, why would you want to start a business where all you know is this promotion may or may not work, and if it does, you don't know how long, and if it doesn't, your 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 hard won enthusiasm, passion, you know your your limited funds are down the drain. When you could play the game we're advocating, and start with a successful business, start with no real investment, ma major investment. Start with predictable ways to multiply the profit it will produce. Start with a model that gives you the highest probability of being able to stop, retire with great wealth. You want to do it young in three or five years at your age. You want to do it at my age. But wherever you want to start, whether you want have no business or you've got one business or five businesses, applying a variation of what this book, this 447 page, very highly detailed, very scenario specific, case study rich, very, very uh richly articulated and easily understood book teaches you has the ability to be the ultimate transformer of of uh of somebody's financial future if you've ever thought wow i would love to you know end up with x amount of money and you go well there's no way i'm going to do it with what i'm doing the way you create that kind of wealth whether your magic number is a million dollars three million dollars five million dollars ten million doesn't matter it is very doable using variations of these strategies. And I say variations because you can apply it any way you want. I mean, I have a certain growth trajectory I want, but you may have more ambition at your age. You might say, I want 500 million. I want 5 million. I want, you know, a million. It's whatever you want. And then when you start exercising, applying these methods and they work, you're going to go, wow. I really set my sights probably too low because when you see it works, it works on getting control. It works on, on multiplying profit. It works on people wanting to buy it. It works on building uh, a, an, an expanded asset, a business that has more components than all of a sudden, if you got, if you bought a smaller business that has a multiple, multiple means what it will sell for that is one X of profits or two X of profits but you get it to a certain level of profitability and all of a sudden it's worth 7x. Besides the increased profit, you rose it to a, a value that is seven times more or four times or whatever it is than you bought it for. And that's where wealth is created. These private mm -hmm. equity firms buy a business or a couple of businesses or do a roll up. Five years later, they do an exit for hundreds of millions, sometimes billions. And the owners get a huge portion of that increase. That's how they have all this super wealth is creating. I'm not suggesting, I'm not suggesting at all, Jason, that necessarily anyone watching, listening, however they consume this is going to make 10 million or 50 million. What I am saying is that that's very achievable if you have the right application of what you will very clearly learn how to do in this book. And it's not teaser. It is the kind of fundamental ed education lesson and instructional that you can read this probably best twice. So you really integrate it. You can follow uh, section one, which is how to acquire and finance it or, or fund it. Section two is how to multiply dramatically the profitability. Section three is how to take that if you want to sell it right now or wait to do that when you build whatever you want the vision to be. Maybe 10 integrated businesses together, 10 access vehicles, whatever. And then you do it over and over again. You rinse and repeat for what we call an epic exit and a mammoth payday. <laughs> I need to ask you the one question here, which is about if 
like I'm going to go out there and pick up a copy of this book. By the way, there's going to be a link in the show notes both to get the book and I know there's a special webinar that's going to be happening that you'll all be able to register toward. On September the 23rd at 11 o'clock in Los Angeles, PST time, we are doing a live launch. During that launch, Roland Frazier and I, who is the co uh, the co-author, We'll be on for about 90 minutes. We'll do a distillation, which is much richer and more explanatory than I just did. And we will uh, extend to people not just the chance to acquire the book at a very advantageous price, whether they want it audio, uh, uh, physical form, or both, but also because we want to sell an enormous amount of books on that day, we are going to in, uh, incentivize and induce uh, a lot of people to be excited because he and I have wonderful and expensive training programs that we have sold and sell for thousands of dollars a piece. And we're going to take a collection of all those and we are going to make them available gratis if somebody buys uh, a or just a few books. Why would we do that? Because we are looking for needles in haystacks. We want to help everybody who's trying to create prosperity or wealth through uh, a, a limited uh, approach type of a business model, have the chance to have unlimited wealth. We also want to find within the thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who we hope will purchase and read the book, a small number who operate businesses that are perfect for Roland and I to get involved in, either acquire partner with, do consulting for equity. It's a small number, but we need a large number of people we can help who either can grow into those numbers or who will read it, use it for themselves to do very well and prosper, but also know people large enough they will be able to refer to us. Uh, and the book is just such a superior way of creating prosperity, wealth, happiness, fulfillment, and control of the rest of somebody's life. And that's the truth. Hey everyone, Jason coming back here at the end of this episode. And you might've noticed something, or maybe you haven't, but I did not do it any kind of outro. Matter of fact, my internet got disconnected in the middle of my interview with the one and only Jay Abraham. But something very interesting happened the moment that disconnection happened is I came to give my next paragraph and it was an interesting scene where Jay could not hear me, but I could hear him. And so I went to ask my follow-up question during the interview and then Jay Abraham just said, well, might have a connection issue. So he just continued speaking and then he said, sounds like our host might be gone. So let me actually close this interview myself. And he went ahead and did the conclusion of the episode himself. And I just wanted to highlight that as a testament to his excellence and his experience in this field that no matter what happens, he knows that there's an action you can take that makes you stay professional. And so I just want to give my kudos and tip my hat to Jay. Matter of fact, this conversation was so fascinating and it opened my mind to the buying and selling of businesses. I've pre-ordered a copy of his book. I would encourage you to do the same. And he spoke about his special invitation to the webinar that I will be attending myself as well. I've always had a fascination around buying and selling when it comes to real estate. That's where I really started getting myself involved in transactions. And what goes even more complex and more fascinating than real estate is the buying and selling of businesses. So my curiosity is engaged. My skill set around sales feels very utilized in the process of buying and selling businesses. And I already do so much work with companies that are looking to scale, grow and take themselves to the next level. A lot of what I apply in these businesses has helped them operate more effectively. So I can't wait to learn more. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation with Jay. And until next time, keep selling with love, whatever it is that you decide to sell. Thank you so much for listening to the Selling with Love podcast. We have some previous episodes you can tune into right here. And if you prefer the short form content where you get to the point in under 10 minutes, we do have a ton of clips from our best episodes that are being shared on this channel as well. So pick which one supports you the most. And of course, thank you for liking, subscribing, and of course, selling with love.